I'm going to just talk to you about why I think um, we should seriously be thinking about boycotting the upcoming exams that Michael Gove is proposing um, future generations will be taking in 2017. So it's a bit of a way for you, but I wanted to talk to you because you are the generation that can influence things to come, okay? And I want to tell you about, you know, what he's proposing and my thoughts on exams generally, okay? Um, we need to think about what assessment is before we go into um, really examining the detail. So what are we trying to do when we assess people, young people like you? I'm a teacher in a secondary school, teaching in a large comprehensive now to London, used to teach in Tower Hamlets as well, so John Cass Secondary, if anyone knows that. Anyone here from that? Yeah. yeah. Um, when, uh, unfortunately, when I was there, it wasn't a very good school, but as soon as I left, it got much better. So, you know, we were 3% A to C grades um, when, we, when it, I, I left it, and then um, it got much, much better, obviously. Um, yes. I, te I taught uh, EAL, English as an additional language, and English um, in, in CAS, as we called it. Yeah. Um, so, assessment, right, I think the two crucial things you've got to understand before we go on further is there are two types of assessment. There's formative assessment, which is the assessing a teacher should be doing all the time in the classroom, looking at what you can do in the subject and seeing, you know, what can be done to improve you, okay? So you might be taking tests, they might be looking at your writing, those sorts of things. And then there's summative assessment, and this is largely what I'm going to be talking about, which sums up overall what you can do in a in the subject, like English, you know, you get a grade, A, A star, whatever, that sums up kind of your experience of English, okay? We're going to be looking at that, that sort of examinations of uh, summative assessment. Okay, um, why do we assess? It's quite an interesting question. Why do we actually need to assess you and you take GCSEs and A-levels? Well, you need to show that you're competent, you're, you're good at something, okay? So we're checking that you actually know how to write and read English or do maths, okay? We're also doing things like with A-levels particularly, you're in competition with everyone else. If you want to get into a university, you're, we're seeing how good you are. So to get to a top university, you need reasonable uh, grades, better than other people. Um, a lot of other people think, though, that it is also about social control. We are actually controlling you in what you learn and how you learn by exams, okay? Um, central government, and this has been happening for a couple of hundred years, the Victorians figured this out, they started exams not in England, but with the Indian Civil Service in the 19th century, and they figured out, because they'd taken over India, they colonised India, and they figured out, well, actually, if you start giving people exams, um, Indian, educated Indians, it's a very good way of controlling them, because you get into their thought processes. You get them thinking, hang on a minute, English stuff is great. Um, Shakespeare is the thing to read. Um, we need to be thinking like the English. You get into their skins, and so there's a sense that exams Form, uh, are a good form of social control and you keep uh, people uh, under your control if you have a good exam system that works. Okay, um, who assesses? Well, we're going to largely look at external examiners, but obviously teachers, and interestingly, increasingly good teachers, and I hope this is happening in some of your classrooms, are getting you to assess each other you're starting to assess. That is quite recent because it's quite revolutionary to have the idea that you may have uh, a, a good way of summing up what someone else can do, okay? Um, the current government is very against this sort of idea that you might have a say in your own attainment, okay? They want an external examiners, people um, who are marking exams that have nothing to do with your schools, you're not your teachers, checking how well you're doing. Okay, um, well, what is assessed? In a pen and paper test, you could argue all that is being assessed is essentially how well you write, your writing skills. And you may well have the experience of doing a lot of pen and paper work in class, okay? 
The problem comes, though, that not all of these things that uh, uh, educational thinker Hargreaves says is really important are being developed by an exam. So you've got to think, and we'll discuss at the end of this, how much is uh, an exam system helping you manage your own learning? How much are you getting independent by figuring out things for yourself? How much problem solving is going on? Or are you told the answer by your teachers that you, you know, basically you're prepped for the exam and you're told what to think? Um, how much real thinking for yourself is going on? Okay? How much research, inquiry, investigation? Do you have an exam, for example, where you can go on the internet and research things for yourself and then figure things out and write a report like you perhaps would do in real life? Um, invention, enterprise, entrepreneurship. What exams develop you being a business person in a way perhaps Dragon's Den or The Apprentice does? Um, do you have exam courses like that? Communication, well there's a lot of exams mainly about communicating on paper. How many exams are about communicating in the way I'm doing now? Talking to a group of people, communicating um, in a spoken way. Um, social and interpersonal, do exams create you, uh, 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 encourage you to be sociable and talk to each other in a kind of meaningful way? Teamwork and leadership, do exams encourage these things? Many uh, people think not. Um, when to assess? Well, what's, this is a, a big thing that's not going to change. At 10 years, you have the Key Stage 2 SATs that all of you probably have uh, done, and then you've got the GCSEs, and at the moment you have the AS levels. They're going to be disbanded, though, and it will be assessed at 18, the A levels. Okay. Um, Key issues I want you to know about, guys, and if you're going to get a campaign together, you need to be aware of two important words. The first word is validity. How good are these exams how, as a test of intelligence? Do they really uh, show what you can genuinely do in a subject? Okay? And then the other key word is reliable. Are, do you find when you get your exam grades back, have they been reliably marked? Or do you have to contest the marks? Do you have to send the paper back and get it remarked because actually often you've got the wrong mark. Someone has, you know, really not looked carefully at what you've done. Okay? Um, now, there's, I'm not going to read all of this out, but there's a lot of research done on reliability. Basically, the news is bad. Most exams, nearly 50% of them, according to a top academic, Dylan William, are incorrectly marked, unreliably marked. Half of the exams you will take are unreliably marked um, because the examiners, on average, get at £5 per script. It takes them about 15 to 20 minutes to write a, to read a script, and they are on they are doing less than minimum wage almost, you know, when they're marking scripts. If, even if they can get through two, three in an hour, um, you know, it, it's, it's not, good, not, not good money. So at the moment, you, you know, the chances are your script will be badly marked. Um, and that is serious research done by the government, former government qualification. Applications of Curriculum Authority also showed that. And in fact, it was so bad one year, you may remember this, in 2008, the whole thing with Year 9 test collapsed because they were all totally wrongly marked and they couldn't mark them properly. And the Education Secretary of the day made, in my view, the best decision of the last 20 years in education. He got rid of the Key Stage 3 SATs. And I've noticed my lessons have got a lot better because I'm not drilling my kids for those appalling exams that had really very little to do with English, my subject. So he got rid of them. Right, we need to think, and I want to give you the language to start talking about this to other students in your school and to start having a discussion with teachers in your school. And perhaps we can go to the House of Parliament, we can talk to other important people like the teaching unions, we can perhaps go even to Michael Gove, the Education Secretary himself, and talk about, are exams encouraging initiative in you? Are they making you do things for yourself? Getting up and go, making you feel that you um, are full of ideas for what's going to be confronting you when you leave school. Are exams 
helping you problem solve. You're going to come across thousands and thousands of problems in your life when you come across um, about making money, about dealing with family issues, setting up businesses, coming up with ideas for work. You know, we're facing one of the worst recessions in the last hundred years at the moment. You guys, when you leave school, you're going to need to think about how can I create something, a, a web page, a website or a business that's going to help me make money and be wealthy. How can I do that? Is our exams, is the exam system encouraging you to think like this and help you um, become a really important and a uh, happy citizen. Our, is the exam system doing that for you? We need to think about that. Um, I think a really massive issue, do schools and the exam system help you deal with the internet, for example? Or are, are you someone that you know perhaps doesn't in school look at uh, deal with YouTube and Googling things or anything like that, but actually when you leave school, you're spending hours and hours on the internet, messing around, playing computer games, and not learning to manage your time and the resources there on the internet. Um, okay, so the problem with exams um, are many, many problems. Teachers might not have covered what is actually in the test. Um, you may have unfortunately come across this yourself. Um, the test may be too long for students to concentrate on it. And so, you know, and you've had a long day. Maybe you set a test in the afternoon after you've done another exam, and actually you're quite good at that exam, but because you're completely knackered from doing a three hour test before, you don't do well on that particular thing. Um, multiple choice exams, it looks like a lot of students guess what's going on um, and does a grade, this is a crucial issue, does a grade like in English, an A or a B, sum up your performance? I'll give you an example of this, I've got a student, um, I'll call him uh, Ali, okay, it's not his real name, he, he and I've got to be honest, he's uh, got is emotional issues, he, he freezes his exams, he writes one line in an hour, one line. I was teaching him on Tuesday, Wilfred Owen, and he wasn't having to write anything, and I've been working a lot about developing his confidence. He read the poem to a class, a difficult poem, and he explained what it was about, and I knew, of all the pupils in my class, he knew poetry the best, actually. Yet he will get a U in his test. He will get an ungraded. Is that fair on him? He he is um, he he's great at understanding poetry. If you wanted, if any of you in this room, well, if you're doing war poetry, anyone doing war poetry for GCSE? Have you done it? One or two. If you're doing war poetry, you would go to this guy to explain what a poem is about. Yet he will not do well in the exam. So is that fair? Um, to have that great. Um, now, there's a lot of evidence that actually people who do well in exams forget it all um, three months later. So they're actually brilliant. They get an A, an A star, and then they have forgotten it all. So actually, all of that learning in science and English was worthless in the long run. It hasn't helped them. They've just been really good at prepping for exams the night before. Um, Often, you, and you may have seen this in your classes, you can have a discussion in a minute when I switch the video off, kids n learn pretty quickly that they're going to fail. And they just switch off. And they are a horror in the classroom, mucking around. It's not worth it. They know they're going to fail, and they do uh, perhaps a, an easier course, or they're often excluded from school, and they're causing trouble. So the, does, you know, the exam system seems to create people who can be like that. Um, it can be limited in what it tests. Um, they only, a lot of exams, test your endurance. So for example, I know some people who are master copiers and retainers of information. They can read a page of like science textbook uh, a, few, a few minutes before and they just remember it and they just drill it out in the exam and actually they have very, very little understanding what goes on but they do quite well. Okay. Um, I, right, I want to talk to you now about starting a campaign. I think 
if we can have a discussion in a minute, I think it's a time to start talking to your schools, talking to teachers, talking about this, because what's coming up is worse than what you are currently doing. You're doing GCSEs, you've got coursework in them, you've got a chance to explore different um, skills. In 2017, everything will be assessed by exam, terminal exam, and you're only gonna get one go at it, you're gonna have no resets, and if you fail that exam, you're finished, okay? There's a lot of evidence that this is going to really affect children with special educational needs who can't who need more time they're not very good at doing exams children from poorer backgrounds there's a lot of evidence to suggest that children from poorer backgrounds don't do so well in the exam as people from wealthier backgrounds now if you think about that that makes sense doesn't it a wealthy child has got parents who pay for private tutors extra lessons and this is what, what seemed to happen. The richer you are, the better your exam results. And we've no way of actually breaking that mould at the moment, okay? So it's unfair on them. It's also unfair on children with English as an additional language. Often they may be really bright, but actually they're put in the bottom to do the uh, bottom exams or they don't do well in exams because they can't write fluently at that point in English, okay? So it really affects more vulnerable groups. And I think what you're gonna see in 2017 is those groups really, really suffering. But everyone is gonna suffer because I have yet to meet a student who likes taking exams. And in fact, we've got one, two people left. Um, but I, very few do. Um, so I, my, my thoughts are, we could start to have a discussion in a minute about talking to the UK Youth Parliament a bit wider, talking to teaching unions. I know a lot of people who work in the unions. I know people who work, I know MPs as well. I know your local MP, Jim Fitzpatrick. I mean, he's a very helpful uh, character. He might be interested in this. Talking, I even, I know Michael Gove as well, um, who's the Education Secretary. Um, might be a bit more difficult to get hold of him, but I think if I think personally, your voices will be the ones most listened to in this debate. I think if you have a lot of teachers moaning about this, people have tended to ignore them. But if this is a grassroots thing that where pupils are starting to be aware, hang on a minute, 2017 it's going to be massively unfair for 15, 16 year olds taking the new GCSEs. Um, and it's, you know, if, if there's threats of boycotts, strikes, and students are seriously considering that, I think uh, central government are going to start listening. They're also going to listen to your parents. So you need to start talking to your parents about this. If you've got younger brothers and sisters, if you've got anyone in year seven that you know, they are the ones that are going to be the guinea pigs for these exams. Okay, um, you're in a way lucky because you're taking GCSEs, which largely most universities at the moment accept as valid qualifications. But what if these new exams in 2017 are just regarded as a joke and the whole thing is disaster, like what happened in 2007 with the SATs, when the whole thing completely collapsed? Um, uh, you know, that we're facing a, real, a very kind of drastic situation now. Um, so, do you think these exams look fair? Would you consider a boycott? Um, any, I, I run a blog with a group of other journalists, teachers, called Local Schools Network. Anyone more interested in blogging about this, we get a lot of people, influential people, looking at that blog. The Education Secretary has actually mentioned that he reads it. Um, you, you, uh, so that, if you are interested in posting something there, do so. Um, so I, my next step would be, you know, perhaps have a discussion now, possibly meet me in October or a bit later on, and see, you know, what's come of your conversations and what you think should be done. Okay, I've finished my formal talk now, and maybe we can have a conversation about this, and I'll switch the video off.